Hello everybody, you can call me Hunch, and today I'm going to go over um, why I think Ethereum make, is making a massive uh, mistake, in my opinion. Uh, we're going to watch a, a short clip of, of uh, basically the head of Ethereum talking about Ethereum versus Bitcoin, and I'll comment on it. And then I'll tell you like how I thought ETH could have succeeded if, uh, if, and why I think it could have succeeded if it did it and uh, if it waited to go to proof of stake until it flipped Bitcoin. All right, okay? So let's dive on in here. Here's um, Mr. Vitalik. Uh, so I think like to summarize that uh, one of the ways that I think about this in a more philosophical way is like proof of work is uh, based on the laws of physics. And so you sort of have to work with the world as it is, right? You have to work with, you know, electricity as it is, hardware as it is, what computers are um, as it is. Whereas because proof of stake is virtualized in this way, it's basically letting us create a simulated universe that has its own laws of physics. And that just gives oh, let's the, go back. that has its own laws of physics, that has its own laws of physics, the universe that has its own laws of physics, the universe that has its own laws of physics, that has its own laws of physics. And that just gives the us as protocol developers a lot more freedom to optimize the system around actually having all of the uh, different uh, physics and laws of physics, its own laws of physics. And that just gives the us as protocol developers a lot more freedom to optimize the system around actually having all of the uh, different uh, security properties that we want, right? And, you know, if we want it, the, the system to have a particular security guarantee, and then, like, often there is a way to modify the uh, proof of stake mechanism to also achieve it. So it's just, uh, you know, much more flexible, and it shows through in the uh, efficiency and the... Okay, so basically, what he described is the system we have, and this is um, interesting because he said they create their own laws of physics. Okay, so what that reminds me of is fractionated reserve banking, right? Where the bank doesn't actually have the money, they want to be more flexible, they want to make more money, so they just endlessly create money. Okay, so to me, that sounds completely insane. Maybe not to everybody, that doesn't sound insane. But to me, that definitely sounds insane. Like, why am I wearing this right now? I'm not listening to anything. It, it's completely insane, right? I mean, that's the system we have. And so that leads me into my point. Ethereum merged way too soon, right? If Ethereum waited to actually become money, right? And flip Bitcoin and, and uh, be used as the currency of the internet before they went to proof of stake, they then could move the, the current system parallel directly onto Ethereum because it would have been smooth. People would have had more faith in Ethereum, right? But Ethereum has subject, uh, subjected itself to failing because it didn't flip Bitcoin. It didn't become the currency of the internet yet more ubiquitously. And it's so in, in so doing that, it hasn't been able to basically move the current system that we have in this... Uh, parallel universe of nonsense over onto Ethereum, right? And if Ethereum waited to flip Bitcoin, I think they may have succeeded in uh, in this nonsensical logic. It, it sounds so insane to me uh, that that clip can be on the internet and people buy Ethereum, like, or, or any proof of stake chain. And if you go look at all these proof of, proof of stake chains, okay, Algorand, so these are the ones from this last cycle. Here, I'll move my... Uh, Thing here, okay. So some of these are from this uh, cycle that just went by Solano, Algorand, Tezos. Before that, I don't. I was around in 2017, right? We had XRP, which is now dropping. We had EOS uh, and, and Litecoin and stuff like that. That wasn't proof of uh, stake, but we had a, we had a couple proof of stakes, like right. You know, XRP isn't exactly proof of stake, but it's proof of stake esque. Okay, and they all tend to fail, right? And uh, they don't, you know, fail in a sense that they never gain market share. And I think that is what Ethereum just did to itself. It's going to become like every other competitor, Avalanche, Solano, Cardano. Why use Ethereum if it's not money, right? Now it's just a platform like everything else. There's nothing, there's no um, network, there's, they've lost the network effect of money, right? And that they just gave it to Bitcoin. So, uh, in, you know, they're ultrasound money, right? Except they burn tokens to, to pump their own bags, right? And even that, 
is not succeeding. So I think they failed miserably. I think uh, that doesn't mean I don't hold ETH as like an insurance policy that it blows up and blows Bitcoin out of the water. But what they're doing is unethical. They they burn tokens. They changed the mechanism. Nobody knows the supply, right? And they created their own universe. They literally created their own universe is what the banking system does, right? The, the current banking system is not bound by reality. It's bound by paper IOUs and credit. It's completely fake, right? And and so, you know, Ethereum, I got some just in case the world uh, tends to go in this parallel universe and just move over to on Ethereum, right? I, I've even seen things like, oh, Ethereum will be great for CBDCs. Like the, the thought leaders of, of Ethereum say, CBDCs is a good thing, which I thought was only for XRP maxis. But uh, uh, that, these are my thoughts on XRP. I think it failed miserably. I'm buying Bitcoin at stacks. Uh, I'm doing layered money. Uh, if you want to do Ethereum, Godspeed, brothers and sisters.